During the early 1800s, Lewis and Clark were on a historic journey across North America. While crossing the Great Plains, they took notice of a small barking animal that appeared in infinite numbers. The creature barked like a dog, but lived in villages containing a great number of holes in which they hid when frightened. This small creature was in fact a member of the squirrel family, and now better known as the black-tailed prairie dog. There once were an estimated 5 billion prairie dogs living in an area from Mexico to Canada. But by the late 1880s, homesteaders viewed this animal as a nuisance because it ate grass that could have been used for livestock and also fed on planted crops. Thus began an ongoing conflict between landowners and prairie dogs. Today, little more than 1% of the original population of black-tailed prairie dogs still exist. Their once sprawling towns have been reduced to small, scattered clusters. Over the past century, their population has been depleted due to disease, industrialization, and mass extermination. But what place do prairie dogs serve in our ecosystem? Are they merely vermin, or are they victims of human encroachment? In this video, we will explore the plight of the black-tailed prairie dog. Uh, next to the grass and fire, they're the most essential thing to the prairie ecosystem. There are 140 species plus that depend on the prairie dog at some level for their existence. Uh, it may be as a food source, as a, a place to live in their burrows. Um, and then animals such as a black-footed ferret are absolutely, totally dependent on the prairie dog for their existence. Prairie dogs are important because they're a keystone species, which means that they have a major influence on a lot of other species. Uh, we think the nutritional level is higher with rotation grazing and prairie dogs. And uh, for us, uh, you know, that's important too, to have a higher nutritional level of the grass. You know, we, we just believe in it. Uh, one reason that we believe this way is that we went uh, like uh, a little over 20 years ago we went to grazing school and that's probably where we picked up our our thinking on on uh, being for wildlife. Audubon of Kansas along with national nonprofit organization Defenders of Wildlife filed a lawsuit in September of 2009 with the U.S. District Court against the EPA for approving pesticides Rosal and Caput D for use in poisoning of prairie dogs. Many entities, including the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, have urged the EPA to create restrictions of the anticoagulants due to their known and potential impacts on wildlife, including the endangered black-footed ferret. The black-footed ferret depends totally on the prairie dog for its existence. It lives in their tunnels, and prairie dogs are its primary food source. In fact, black-footed ferrets don't exist in the wild outside of prairie dog colonies. Well, Larry and I think it was worth it, but I can't judge for anyone else. I would do it again. We need to get together a little bit. <laughs> it can be done. I'm sure it can. I just don't want to... Uh, I don't want my grandkids to, to grow up and never have the opportunity to see what a prairie really looks like. 